All right, so in this video, we're gonna be covering what I consider to be one of the most common questions in all of personal development. I know it is indeed, for me, one of the most common questions that people ask me, and that is, Nathan, how can I be more motivated? How can I increase my level of motivation? How is it that you're able to, you know, stay fit, work out, and still do the things that you do? I mean, I can't even get myself off the couch once I get off of work. I work hard, I have a long day, and there are other things that I would really like to do that I can't do. Or I'd like to start the side hustle, but I've got a job that requires so much of me, and I'm a parent also. Now, this video is not gonna be the ultimate end-all, be-all guide to motivation, but what I wanna do is I wanna give you some core pillars that will help answer this question, and that you can check your particular level of motivation against, okay? and. At the end of the day, perhaps you'll find one thing that you could tweak that will help you increase your level of motivation. Now I'm gonna do that by using an image, okay? So we'll get into it right away. Uh, by using this image, if I can draw, <laughs> of uh, a mountain, okay? So this is your mountain of, this is your objective, and this is you your pretty or your handsome self at the side of the mountain. Whatever it is that you're trying to do is most likely big, at least with wherever you are. And that is why you're having some issue doing it. Now, one of the first things, again, before I even go into these things about that, is you really need to ask yourself, is this thing that I'm wanting to do right for me? Because sometimes we may consciously decide to do things that go against our inner knowing, our inner wisdom. And then of course, there's no wonder why you're not able to do it. So you must ask yourself, is this thing actually right for me that I'm trying to do? Once you've answered yes, I mean, yes, it should have been something I should have done a long time ago, so it's certainly right for me, then you're cooking with gas. Now, what we wanna do is let us put your objective here okay this is what you're wanting to go get this objective this prize this trophy is at the top of a mountain don't laugh at me okay this is what you're trying to get at the top of the mountain so the number one thing you need number one thing I would check for if you're suffering from a lack of motivation or you'd like to increase your motivation is you must have clarity on what you want Okay, this cannot just be, I wanna lose weight, I wanna make more money. It cannot be that. It must be quantified, okay? The question is, how much is weight? How much is money? You must assign an, 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 um, a number to this thing, okay? You must define the objective. It must be really clear, because as soon as you say, you know, I wanna have 500 followers on social media. I want to earn $60,000 next year speaking. That starts to become a very concrete goal. I wanna lose 50 pounds. Once you put a number on it, once you define the outcome, the next thing that you need to do is you need to check yourself for desire, okay? I'm gonna backtrack here again. In addition to defining your outcome, because what you're trying to do here is you're trying to gain clarity on this. You must ask yourself, what will this look like? Okay, and that is akin to getting vision. It is said that without vision, the people perish. An absence of vision does this. An absence of vision is equivalent to clouds. Clouds that obstruct your view to the top. As soon as you cannot see what's at the top, that mountain's not very appealing. It is the reason why people don't even climb Everest when it is, you know, when the weather is not that great. Because the more visibility you have, the better your likelihood of summiting that. So you wanna ask yourself, what is this gonna look like? Okay, what does this objective, 500,000, okay, cool. Now I have a picture, what does that look like? You have to get in there because this clarity is gonna feed into this next step, which is desire. You see, in Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill said that desire is a starting point of all achievement. It is the reason why I often tell people, look, you don't have a motivation issue, you've got a problem with desire. 
Desire happens to be the kingpin of motivation. It happens to be the source of all motivation. When you've got sufficient desire, you're going to figure out a way. They say when there is a will, there is a way. Okay, so desire is a starting point of all achievement. Now the question is, what about desire? What if you don't, you realize you don't have sufficient desire, this is what you must do. You must check yourself for purpose. What is the purpose of doing this? Yes, you know you want to make a million. Yes, you know you need 500K followers. Yes, you know you want to make 60K speaking next year. The question is why? You must have a purpose, a why that is very compelling. This could be because the proceeds from that is going to change the life of your children. It's going to change the life of your family. It could be that losing that amount of weight will save you from an early death. It could be that quitting smoking will actually preserve your marriage because your wife is threatened. She's going to leave you and she's going to do it quick, right? And so that why starts putting things into real focus. That why is what's going to help you internalize, emotionalize this objective. If you do not have a why that is very clear, you're not going to do much. They say, when you, you're with, with weak desire, you get weak results. I think that was from Think and Grow Rich. Now, in addition to desire, once you, you've really gotten that thing and you, you've got that desire going, you want to check it against something. This is why my buddy Brendan Shard says, raise necessity, okay? So we want to raise necessity. You want to ask yourself, is this thing something that I must do? Is preserving my marriage, which is your why, something you must do? Is creating a better life for my kids and my mom something I must do? What does that mean for me? So you must raise it to a level of necessity. It is a reason why, for those of you who read the Bible, for those of you who don't, I'm going to tell you. There was a guy in the Bible, I can't quite remember who it was right now because it's just over the top of my head. But he said, necessity is laid upon me to preach the gospel. He even went on to say, woe is me if I do not declare this message. He, he even cursed himself. He said, woe is me if I do not do this because he knew that this thing was that important to him. So you must ask yourself, is this thing that I'm trying to do a necessity? Why? Because climbing this mountain is not going to be easy. You will be forced and you will be faced with quitting. And it is only when you bring that to a level of necessity will you say, nope, can't do it, can't quit. I'm going to die climbing this mountain. When it is something that you must do, you will accomplish it. That desire alone brings inspiration. Inspiration is to be propelled from within. Inspiro, life, to bring life from within. When you have inspiration, you don't really need motivation. Okay? You're often, you need motivation for things you don't want to do. When you have that, you're cooking with gas. So you've got clarity, you've got desire, okay? The next thing that you need, and the reason why some people don't succeed, is because they do not have actionable steps in between them, here, and there. If you say, I want to lose weight, I want to lose 100 pounds, it's easy to give up compared to I've got to lose 10 pounds, I mean, or five pounds in the next 30 days. Compared to, okay, I want to get into shape to, all right, I want to have a six pack, which is clarity, right? And you say, I want to have a six pack because it will help me with my self image. Great, you've got a reason, you've got purpose. And you, 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 I challenge you to dig deeper into that as a matter of fact. So just improve self image is not enough. I want to feel better, I want to, show people that those who were bullied in school can actually turn their lives around. I want to be an inspiration to others. That is now purpose, right? And now the steps. Okay, what are the steps to achieving this outcome? What are the steps to becoming a speaker? It might be giving a local talk. Hell, it might just be practicing the speech in your living room. So what you want to do is you want to list out the steps to achieving this outcome. This is equivalent to base camps when you're climbing Everest. They don't just set up to climb Everest right from the beginning. What they do is they have base camp one. It might take us two days to get there. Base camp two, base camp three. And 
then and then and then they climb the mountain. That is how it's done. So what you must do when you set these steps is remember this. Make sure to set the bar low starting out. Give yourself a low barrier to entry so you can get in there and you can slowly get acclimated to this way of being. Set the bar low. If you're trying to get in shape, don't try to do the things you see people doing on the internet. Maybe you just have to do 10 push-ups. If you can't do 10 push-ups, do the knee push-ups, do half push-ups. If you're trying to run a marathon and you've never ran in the last 20 years, don't attempt that. Maybe just walk to your front yard. If you find that you don't have time to do anything when you get off of work, just, just get yourself to do something for five minutes in the direction that you want to go and then go back to doing what you normally do. But slowly, you begin to ease your way into it. You must create steps. Step one for having 500K followers. All right, maybe we should get our first 100. Maybe we should do this. Maybe we should do that. Maybe we want to partner with other people. Maybe I want to buy ads. You must break these things up into steps, okay? And that way these steps become your intermediate goals. For me, these are actually really what I call goals. This for me is, a, is an objective. This is my goal, okay? These are smaller goals. Now, you've got those things. When you have your intermediate goals, I want you to forget about this. Forget about this. We already know it's in your system. You're excited about it, but don't think about a million dollars. What you need to think about is 10K, all right? Base camp, that is your only focus. You are looking to base camp and stick to that. Every once in a while, yes, you want to know what you're doing, but uh, this is your focus from here on out. Most of the best ultra marathon runners, most of the best long distance runners, they don't think about the low long objective. They go one step at a time or one pole at a time. That's what they do. And that is what you must do. Now, after that is done, you've broken down the steps. Okay. This is conceptually. The next thing that you need is action. Not just any action. Stay with me. Not just any action. You need action that is based on habit. Habit, habit, habit. There are people who do all of this thing and still fail. There's a reason is because they have not or they did not make that thing a habit. Professor William James, the father of American psychology, first um, chair of Harvard um, School of Psychology said, you must make your nervous system your ally instead of your enemy. You must make your body your ally instead of your enemy. If you want to wake up at 5 a.m., okay, maybe you always wake up at 7. What you do? You follow these steps, and you slowly ease your way to 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. But here's the thing, no matter what you do, you must try to make this a habit. If you're trying to go to the gym, don't go to the gym on Monday at 3, Wednesday at 7, Thursday at 2, don't do that stick to the same time. Even if it means doing that thing once a week, even if it means it doing once a month, whatever it is that you're trying to do, set a fixed schedule for it. Make your life a collection of habits and things will be so much easier to do, okay? When you have habits, William James again continues to say that having a habit is equivalent to living off of the interest of your capital. You see, your willpower is your capital, is what you needed to jump in there and get it done in the beginning. But afterwards, when you can live on the interest of the fund, what is happening is that this force of habit, that's why it's called a force of habit, it runs itself after a while. That is that interest. You're not even touching your capital. You're not touching your principal. Now you're just living off of the interest. Your body is doing things that you are not really consciously involved in. Okay, it doesn't take that much energy. The what we call initiation energy is much reduced because now you've made it a habit. It is absolutely imperative that you form habits around the things that you are trying to do. Now, these are the things that you can do external to yourself. If I were to add one thing, 
um, which I'm not going to focus on a lot because these were things you could do on your own. But if I were to add one thing for motivation, it would be a Sherpa. It would be accountability, okay? This accountability is equivalent to the local who lives in Nepal. The lo local who is gonna help you climb this mountain. They, they know the mountain, they've helped other people climb the mountain, they're gonna keep you from quitting, they're gonna say, hey, don't step there, they're gonna say, hey, come on already, you're taking too long, right? This is the insurance against failure. So if you can incorporate accountability into what you do, Maybe your wife is your accountability person. Maybe your coach is your accountability person. But you really want someone who's going to hold you to that task. It's not the responsibility. So don't put it all on them. That is why these are the things that you need to do. It is your objective. It is your responsibility. But you have a little bit of insurance. And that insurance would be accountability. This person that can help you navigate or encourage you as you climb this mountain. So these are the things that without a whole course or without a, writing a book about it, I, I know will certainly help you with motivation. You follow these steps. None of these can be excluded. If you follow these steps, you will without fail make actionable progress. Sit down and ask yourself which of these are my weakest on and go in there and try to gain clarity on them or set an intention to do better in one of these categories and your level of motivation will increase. I thank you for watching this video. If you've got any other questions on mindset, you know, spirituality, psychology, sales, please feel free to forward it to me, whatever channel it is you're watching this on, and I will answer your question directly. However, if I feel that it will benefit the wider audience, I will make a video out of it. Thank you again. Be the best you can be. This is Nathan Akpan. Cheers.